Hey guys, and welcome back to Signalis. Let's continue. So, in the last episode, we managed to build up pretty much our entire deck, which is uh, pretty damn good. Actually, what I am going to do, I'm going to go back and get a different weapon. Just because at this point, I should say, I have now finished the game. Um, and I have some thoughts on this game. But just in case you're curious, is this game good? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's good. Uh, anyway, let's grab up. Let's put that back. Um, ah, hang on. I've only got five rounds left in that bad boy. Uh, let's... That's unfortunate that we've kind of wasted some of this. But, you know, whatever. Let's take the flare gun. Uh, let's drop that back. Let's drop the compact ammo back. And... Let's just take, I guess, the grenade ammo. Sure, why not? Right, let's go build ourselves a deck of cards. Now, this grenade launcher is pretty rubbish unfortunately but you yeah, know it is what it is now we need to go back up the ladder room and produce a deck of cards uh, also I will say I know the ending that we're aiming for or the ending that we're gonna get I should say obviously I know that now but what I will say is according to the ending guide that I have uh, we should <laughs> we should not have got this ending because we haven't ticked any of the boxes for it. So uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. But hey, whatever. Right, so we need the death card. Uh, game. We need the death card. Alright. And our final, final card which is the sun card. Now, to get the most out of this game, I think you need to be... I keep saying somebody far more intelligent than myself, or I kept thinking this as I was playing through it, uh, because there's so much interpretation, so much um, symbolism and all that good stuff coming up. However, I did think I was probably being a bit unfair to myself as... Most people would probably complete this game in a couple of sessions. However, I've played this game over about six weeks. Uh, maybe more than six weeks, actually. So I've forgotten characters and references and things, um, which is absolutely not the way to play this game. Anyway, now I have completed the tarot card. This unlocks. The light well above has been consumed by the mass of meat, releasing some debris that was caught in the nets above. And we're going to pick up the dial ring. Yes, sir. Now, we have a little peephole that we can see here. Now, if you think about it, it's kind of obvious what that room is. It's uh, really cool. Anyway, those tarot cards... Um, actually gave us the key if I can get my notes up with my screenshot there we go <laughs> they actually gave us the key to what we need to set these dials as alright so Leng was about that hermit or helmet however you want to call it ah yeah we need the dial for rock front like so. With this one, we need a little bit of that. I think. That's good. And this one needs to be completely empty. Excellent. And this lets us go through the hole. <laughs> kind of like Silent Room. Heal the room, but not really. And look at that. We have we've come full circle. Computer screen is blank. We can't do anything with it. 
Ariane's old radio transmitter is still transmitting. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, Ariane's old memory, I guess. Old Imperial serials. Ariane loved reading these. She did. She did. Now this here, this box here will allow us to get a secret ending. But you cannot get the secret ending uh, on your first playthrough of the game. I will show it off. Uh, but essentially you need to replay the game uh, and collect certain keys by using certain radio frequencies in certain rooms. And then that will allow us to get the, the secret ending. Um, I'm not going to replay this game through again. <laughs> I'm going to use alternate means to show off the other endings because I just don't have time. Um, right. So that's basically all we have. The, the door won't open yet. An old wooden wardrobe. Ariane used to keep her clothes here. She did. She's got a little heater there. Very cold, miserable little outpost. The last seal has been broken. It's time to go home. Pick up the king in yellow. Let's do it. And then we get this actual three-dimensional um, view of this room. We can go into the next room finally. And that leads us into this somewhat cozy looking room. We've got lots of read in here. Um, so, Auntie's notes. Ariane, I left some of yesterday's dinner in the fridge for you. You can warm it up when you get back from school. Please, pick up the books from your, un uh, your uncle ordered from the ITEL bookstore on your way home. Remember to leave some space in your school bag for them this time so they don't get wet. This is really important. Um, we're basically about to go fight the final boss. I'm not a huge fan of the final boss. Uh, I get what they were going for, but it, yeah, well, well, we'll get into that. But this is basically saying, hey, you know those six inventory slots you have, you know, um, which is basically nothing. You need to keep one of those free for the final boss. So we have some 10 millimeter ammo. We have a letter from mother. My dearest Ariane, I'm glad to hear you're feeling better again. I was very worried when I heard back from your aunt that you're in the hospital again. I still remember how you used to get sick so much as a child. Please don't overexert yourself, okay? The photo you sent me is very interesting. What a strange coincidence that she looks so much like you. You could be twins. Perhaps she's related to us somehow. Although I don't know anyone named Cell in our family. Or Sue. C U who knows? Who cares? From the looks of it, it was shot on Vinta. Your military service will begin soon, so you might be wearing a uniform like her soon enough. Please send me a photo when that happens. Love, mother. Alright. We read this one. Ah, workforce assignment assignment for Ariane Young. We have been informed that your compulsory military service period was recently completed. According to our files, you have previously graduated from Maidenbrot uh, Polytechnical High School in Rockfront Sector C on R34.59 C. That's the date, by the way. I don't know how they do the date in this game. It's very alien, like a lot of things. Uh, and have recently submitted an application for military service assignment, Penrose Program. Oh dear. That was a mistake. You have been processed by Aeon Workforce Assignment. Previous work experience, store clerk, Young Photo Store, part-time, compulsory military service, rock front orbital, and long range radio operations officer training. That's why they have that radio in that room. Should you not be accepted by a military service program by the end of the season or find other employment, you'll be assigned with the, fol uh, the following workplace. S23, Serplinski Production and Mining Facility on Leng. Yeah, we've already spent a considerable amount of time there. That place sucks. 
that's where everything kind of went wrong. Okay. So, what we're going to do, we're going to drop a save, because we may die here. Um, I died on my first attempt at this final boss. But I managed to do it the second time. But, kind of only just. This boss is... This boss is fairly brutal. Um, right, what should we take? We're going to take the revolver, because we really need the revolver. We're going to take as much ammo as we can carry. What's frustrating here is this final boss would have been way more manageable if we could have taken all of this ammo that we have stored up, and not just the poultry two spare reloads. Doesn't make sense. Really stupid. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. So, we will also take the compact ammo and we're going to take an SMG uh, yeah sure <clears throat> now we're going to want some health as well now I don't really know what the best health to take is I mean we could take the auto injector which automatically activates on um, system failure which is pretty cool so it will bring you back to life on the spot if you die however even though we have seven in our item box we can only take three with us do you see the problem do you see do you see the just irritation of this uh, inventory system now would removing these kind of restrictions dilute the game would it have an impact and you know significantly make the game worse by not having these uh, restrictions no absolutely not if anything it would have cut out a hell of a lot of frustration so we have mountains of health but we're extremely limited with what we can bring with us there's no point in bringing repair patches because they're kind of pointless We've got repair sprays, which are fairly good. They will restore large quantities of health over time. And although we have 19 of them, we can only take six with us. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Now we have the repair spray plus as well. Uh, the problem with the repair spray plus is we have one less, right? Um, which is kind of problematic and these restore a medium amount of health instantly so the repair spray the standard one basically heals more health uh, it just does it over time whereas the repair spray plus does it um, instantly so I don't know what the best choice is there what I do know is when we're fighting the boss we will find another one of these I think possibly another two Whereas we will find a pack of two of these. So I don't really know what would be the most efficient way uh, of taking supplies in. Now the thing with the boss is there is loads of weapons and ammo and health around the boss. All right? That sounds good. Sounds brilliant. Makes things uh, a little bit less uh, sweaty, shall we say. But not really. Because you're completely humstrung by this inventory system. Uh, it's only worth picking up ammo for the weapons that you have but you can only carry so much ammo <laughs> uh, and again um, all these health items that are dotted around you can only pick up the ones that you already have in your inventory because you need to keep a space can you see the fuss it's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous but anyway we're going to go with that, because that's what I beat it on last time. Let's go. This is the end. Leave forever, yes or no? Well, okay. Now, when I first came out here, I didn't know what this was or what I was doing. Uh, this is a really long corridor, but my monitor just goes black here. Luckily, if I look over at my second monitor recording the game, it's not black, so I can see what I'm doing. Let's go home. Adler's note. 
All efforts to contain this illness have been in vain. All the guest out workers have succumbed to it, leaving only dark shadows on walls and floors where they died. And soon, all of us replicas will have lost our senses and turned into writhing masses of flesh. This is interesting because in the last section when we've been running around, there have been like ghostly shadows on walls and on floors. I didn't know what that was, but that that's really cool that actually explains that. So basically all the humans have become dust and powder and all the replicas are turning into wobbly mutant flesh. I now believe it was not an infectious disease, nor some form of poison or radiation. It was a slow corruption of reality itself. As I've uh, relived the same cycle over and over, each time details change, things are twisted, added, removed. How long until it all turns to nothing but noise? So reality is repeating itself. We are trapped in a time bubble. We now kind of know that for sure. And because time is looping over and over and over again, things are getting distorted and warped. And that is the problem. Okay. A red dream. A crash ship. A strange gate. A hole in the ground. An island beyond reach, memories of other lives, dreams of suffering and loneliness, a promise, a search for someone lost. I saw her in the red emptiness, waiting for me. We had made a promise. As the memories of a stranger rushed into my mind, I felt the borders of myself blur. Now, I can no longer tell where Falk ends and Elster begins. So Falk has kind of received our memories and she's not really sure who or what she is anymore which is because of the, this time loop time dilation thing that's going on really interesting really makes you think stop you must turn back there's nothing for you there you've tried so many times and you failed every time didn't you, don't you see that you're ruining everything? And this is your final warning, Adler. So he knows that we are continuously going through the gate and restarting the process. And it's us that is looping time. It's our selfish want to find Ariane and uh, get back together and escape whatever this is. So everything that's going on is our kind of fault. At least this is how I'm understanding the story. There's so, so many um, theories and ideas. And the developer has kind of come out and said, every theory is valid. There is no one thing that's correct. Folks' memory. We were dancing to that song they started the broadcast with. We fell asleep watching that movie we had seen before so many times. If only I could take us back to that time where we were happy. These memories are mine now. That's um, our memory, Elsa's memory, in Fork's head. Well, <sighs> you want to live forever? Not me, that's for sure. Why did you return? There's nothing for you here. She'll never dance with us again. No matter what we do. She doesn't even want us anymore. She? Ariane? Okay. Right, here we go. Both of us, we are incomplete. Let us become whole again. Somebody has been playing way too much. Uh, dead space, which is fine. Alright, so here we go. This is the final boss. Starts off really simple, but there's multiple phases. How many phases do you think? One, two, three, four. No, there's six. Yeah, that's right. Six phases to this boss. Each one gets progressively harder, and with your limited resources, this, this is stressful. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Alright, anyway. Let's go. So, we need to shoot her like three times. 
and then grab a spear. Now remember, maybe four times. Yeah, four times is the magic number. And then hit her with a spear. And that will start the next phase. Grab the ammo. Now, it is important to remember with this, um, although there's ammo and stuff here, we cannot grab everything. Alright. Let's hit her. She's down for the second time. Grab the spear, hit her. Yep. And another thing that you kind of need to remember as well. No matter what you do, time does not stop. So, apart from if you pause and get into inventory screen, of course. Right, so let's hit her three times. I don't want to end the scene just yet because I want to pick up the ammo. It's very slow to pick these things up, unfortunately. Come on. There's your spit. Right, she should be done now. Now you have to wait for her to finish her cycle for her to go down. There we go. Now, problematic here, she starts getting a shield. And you can see all of the st distortion over the screen. It is incredibly difficult to see what you're doing. It's very, very hard. Right, let's wait for her to fire off her beams. Like so. Right, she's done. Let's grab up one of these. Sweet. Reload. Grab the ammo. Cool. We're winning. Kind of. Be very nice. Ah, there's some SMG ammo there. Can we pick it up? I think we can pick it up. Can't really see <laughs> what the fuck is going on, I'll be honest. Right, let's grab that. Cool. Right, let's try and stay clear from the weird. Okay. We've done a decent amount of damage. But unfortunately, we're pretty injured ourselves. Let's reload. Come on. I don't know. Yep, we're injured again. How much damage we've done to her. Okay, cool. She's down, but we don't have a spear. Run. Oof. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty bloody lucky. Now, best thing I've found to do here is to switch over to the SMG. Because the SMG fires multiple bullets. And it makes it way easier to hit her. Because look how many shields she has. And she's down. Alright, that wasn't actually too bad. Actually not as hard as I thought first time round. I actually really enjoyed it that time round as well. Now I knew what I was doing. And there's that wonderful music. Now we are one. I've been waiting a long time for this.
once again. You've returned. Are you really willing to go through with this once more? You've seen what happens. This world cannot take much more. This may be our last chance. If you go back, it'll all fall apart. I can't let that happen. You selfish monster. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. So Adler stabs us in the eye and we shoot Adler. You'll destroy everything. And there we are, where we started. Back at the Penrose. Except it's more warped and twisted. So here we are, back at the Penrose. Well, nothing left to do now, but have a little look around. As we can see, this place is desolate. Everything's kind of gone to hell. Penrose briefing, phase two. Start of decrypted transmission. By our calculations, uh, 1,500 cycles of mission time will have passed when you receive this message. Congratulations, comrade. By now, you should have become fully acclimatized to your new life on board your ship. I think, I'm guessing, like, 1,500 cycles is a day. So, they've, you know, been on this ship now for, what, five years? Something like that. As you approach the Oort Cloud, your search for new worlds will begin. Utilizing the long-range sensors, you will scout for valuable resources, habitable worlds, or signs of alien life. Remember to rely on your replica to assist you in maintaining your vessel. We all wish you great success in your mission. End of decrypted transmission. All right. Cycle. So this was not even a year um, into the journey. When I signed up for this mission, I just wanted to get away from everything. I was sick of rot front of school, of the photo store, sick of being the f uh, sick of the fake smiles and the whispering behind people's backs. When I saw the photos of that soldier, I wondered who she was. Was she happy? Was her family proud of her? Did her comrades love her? Since we looked alike. Could I have been like her? By the end, I just wanted to leave. Nothing I had done or ever uh, or made ever meant anything to anybody. So why bother? Here, I'm finally free. I get to be by myself and do what I want. I can finally be happy. Yeah, obviously a young kid out of uh, college, she didn't realize that <laughs> being fired off um, into space alone by yourself and an android essentially for the rest of your life that sucks i can only imagine how much that would suck and that's basically what happened <clears throat> so penrose briefing phase three Congratulations, comrade. You survived 3,000 cycles, reaching the final phase of the Penrose program. With the end of the operational lifetime of your replica unit approaching, it is time to prepare for the final phase of your mission. If you have not found a suitable world for landing by, 
this point except that you will not. Find solace in the thought that others may be successful where you failed. As you are probably aware, your ship's spare parts and rations will soon be depleted. Life support systems and reactor shielding will soon begin to fail, and radiation may begin to leak from the cooling system. We recommend that you do not attempt to prolong your suffering by reusing old filters or rationing supplies. Instead, make peace with your fate. We suggest that you ask your replica, while still functional, to spare you a slow and agonizing death, or that you take permanent rest in the cryogenic pod. Remember, you will die having served your nation by partaking in a glorious demonstration of our power. What, firing ships into nowhere? Yeah, sounds fantastic. Cycle, uh, so this is like two years in. Talked some more to the SD unit. She's different from the replicas I knew back home. Nothing like my teachers or the block warp protector. I know she doesn't have a choice, but it feels like she's also here because she didn't fit in. It's like we've run away from the world together. At first, I didn't like having someone around, and I was glad she was quiet and, I, and didn't approach me. But lately, I've missed having someone to talk to. It's been so long since I've seen another person. I never thought I'd miss it, except her. Everything is the same in here. Always. Nothing ever changes. Well, yes, you're on a ship. A relatively small ship. Hurtling through space. By yourself. Cycle 1000. So what's that? So that this got to be like about four odd years in. That's if these cycles are each one a day. I had a strange dream. I was listening to the radio with my mother. Like back then, the numbers were on. Mother was taking notes with a book on her lap. It was that book that I saw in the shop window of the bookstore where the twins lived. The one with a yellow hooded figure on the cover. I went there to buy it. It was gone. Erica said the protectors had confiscated it. Or was it Issa? I can't remember. So Issa, yeah, she was the one looking for Erica. Cycle 1840. Everything is always the same. I feel like I'm trapped inside this ship. Well, um, you are trapped inside the ship. <laughs> Nothing out there but the vacuum of space. I know every bolt on every panel in every room of it. I've seen everything. I've done everything there is to do here. I can't concentrate on anything. It's like there's this fog inside my head. And whatever I try, whenever I try to do anything, I just can't focus. I want to go outside. I want to breathe fresh air. I want to feel wind on my face and in my hair. Cycle 2503. I think I've lost more hair. I'm sitting here, getting older. Every time I wake up, I feel older, weaker, sicker. I get out of breath so easily lately. My back hurts when I sit down. How much longer will this go on? Feels like I'm just slowly dying. Well, we all are, basically. <sighs> God, can you imagine being trapped in a ship and just fired off? Oh, misery. I mean, I'm very introverted. I like my own company, but I mean, even I have limits. Cycle 5,000 odd. Bearing in mind, this mission was only rated for 3,000 cycles. 5,000 something. I'm tired of it all. Every time I go to sleep, I wonder if I'll wake up again. I'm scared that it will be the last time I said goodnight to her. Did I say it right? Will she be okay? What if one of us just won't wake up tomorrow? Cycle, wow. 5,400 odd. I don't want to die, but... I don't want to live anymore either. Everything is just so exhausting. I just want to lie down and disappear. I want to sleep. Please let me sleep. Please just make it stop. Please. Oof. And there's the uh, android that we'd harvested from previously, whether that was another life, another cycle, another go round in this madhouse, we don't know. Or shall we say, I don't know. It's time. This is all that's left. Go home. 
Let's go home. Remember our promise. come back for you. It's me, Elsa. Elsa? I'm sorry, but I don't remember. It's okay. And that is that. Perhaps this is hell. Please. Please let me stay by your side a little longer. And that was our ending. It's an incredibly bleak, sad, and brutally depressing game. Um, and it absolutely excels at that. Ah. This was a very interesting game. I This was not what I thought it was going to be when I first started it. I thought it was just going to be like a, you know, fairly standard shoot the zombie, escape the zombie, survival horror thing. Um, I was not expecting such a deep and rich universe. Um, but man, <laughs> I really enjoyed that. The story, though is just mind-bending <sighs> i'll be lying if i said i knew exactly what was going on but the developer has kind of said that's sort of the point from what i can understand ariane was bullied quite heavily in school and she wanted to get away from it so she signed up for the penrose program which meant she got bundled into a Penrose ship and fired off into space, as apparently many others uh, had done as well. The whole point of it was to find a new planet uh, or, or something for the rebels to use. Um, unfortunately, they never found anything. Um, they were lost in space, I guess, before they crashed into another planet. I'm not sure what planet they crashed into. Um, apparently, uh, we went to that mining facility, but I don't know if we actually did crash there or if that was a hallucination or what. I'm not sure. Um, so Ariane was dying of radiation poisoning and sickness and all that good stuff. So we left her in the pod, uh, the cryogenic pod, whilst we went off to find help, I'm assuming. And that is when we found the gate on the planet that we went through that caused a time loop. Uh, and obviously there's so much more to this game than that, but that's the gist that I got from it. Now. There's also all of the stuff that happened with the androids and the replicas. Uh, which, you know, kind of told its own sort of story about their descent into madness. But there is another theory that I was reading. 
that was quite interesting, and I kind of think it makes sense. The actual game that we played was all going on in our android's head while she was sitting next to the cryogenic, uh, the cryogenic pod dying and this was her like death dream so to speak uh, this game which is why there's so many flashes from her old life her old school twisted realities that kind of stuff where you weren't actually going through a time loop or anything like that you were just slowly dying and that was where the dream was coming from and that is a beautifully sad depressing miserable end and I love it <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm going for I, I'd like to buy into that now we only got the one ending so far obviously there will be an extra bit um, a bonus video uploaded with all the other endings but essentially we got the memory ending which it will say in a minute now apparently to get the memory ending um, we're supposed to complete the game quickly as fast as you can under six hours yeah we uh, <laughs> we didn't ignore all the NPCs uh, we talked to all of them including a couple of the secret ones get through the flashback sections quickly I don't think we got through the flashback sections <laughs> particularly quickly avoid fights with enemies well apparently we killed nearly a hundred enemies so I'm not sure about that uh, do not get hit and do not heal often we healed a lot. Oh, there we go. So our total active playtime was nearly 15 hours. Total game time was 26 odd hours. But that's slightly distorted by the fact that uh, I've left this game running a lot in the background. So death cheated. I don't know what that means. Maybe that means using the injectors. Um, but there's still two other endings to get plus technically a third secret ending. Um, now, essentially, the developers come forward and said there is no real proper ending. There's also no good ending, no bad ending. They're all just different endings. It's quite interesting, actually, that interview with him. Um, he actually said if there was a genuinely good, true ending, why bother making others which made me think um so we've got another ending where we leave uh which basically means we get up and walk out i think and we don't actually do anything with uh, our friend in the pod there's also the promise ending uh which is where we keep the promise that we read about uh, when we return to the penrose and that is we kill our friend um so she doesn't have to suffer a painful death through radiation poisoning. Um, yeah, I mean, what more can be said about this game other than what a gem? I mean, I'm probably never ever going to play this again because there's no real reason to. But I loved every second of it. The music and the world building. Oh God, I would love another game in this universe maybe not necessarily survival horror but I don't know maybe something else I'm not sure there's so much here that I'd like to see explored um, so this was recommended by you guys in my discord uh, I believe it was Reva uh, recommending this one and man I wouldn't have played this if you hadn't recommended it to me this one probably would have gone under my radar so thanks for the recommendation it was superb anyway guys i'm gonna leave this video here there will be one extra video with a few bonusy bits the endings and whatnot and apart from that i will see you in the next lp which yeah i've got a few ideas so thank you very much for watching guys and as always till next time mm -hmm.